This West Bank road leads to a Jewish settler outpost, guarding a vital water main supply for larger settlements nearby. A group of nine Jews have made their land below the watchtower their home, constantly on guard against possible Palestinian militant attacks. Palestinians opposed to Jewish settlers living in the occupied territories are not the only ones against outposts like this one. Opposition has come from a more unlikely entity, the Israeli government. Elisha, one of the residents here, says he'll stay, even though the Israeli defense minister recently announced plans to dismantle West Bank settlements like this one. The government has said they want to remove settlers who have set up home without the government's permission. I hope they will not expel us. I don't want to think about it. Right now, we are here. I don't want to think about politics. Maybe they will throw us out. Maybe not. Maybe there will be a major war. Who knows? Settlers who've made their homes in the West Bank since Israel's conquest in 1967 care little about their government's official policy. They consider the land their birthright. This West Bank outpost is named Abigail after the biblical king David's wife. The settlers believe she was born in this area. Left-wing Israeli activists accuse the armed settlers of shrinking the size of a future Palestinian state and endangering the lives of Israeli soldiers. The protesters are active in the area, trying to get the settlers out. We want to see the people that are leading our soldiers to their death. They should be arrested. The activists say the settlers are destroying any chance of a possible land for peace deal with the Palestinians. Yes, we came here to see these uh, illegal outposts. Uh, we call upon the government to evacuate those settlers from here immediately and to take them into the jail. They came here because they want uh, to stop the chances of Israel to uh, withdraw from this uh, area in order to, uh, to achieve peace agreement. They don't want peace agreement, they don't want to stop the fire, they want to continue the violence, and that's exactly what they're doing here. Outposts could extend the boundaries of an existing settlement. Peace Now, a left-wing Israeli group, says the number of West Bank settlements has increased by over 30 in the last year, despite the Israeli government's promise to freeze construction. Jana Tayar is defiant. She's determined to keep a Jewish presence in the politically charged West Bank, but her attitude has brought horrific personal tragedy. The defiance is dangerous. Even driving from one location to the next could be deadly. Several Jewish settlers have been ambushed and killed by gunmen on long stretches of West Bank roads. Despite the ongoing violence, recently more than a thousand people have moved into the Ghanai Shomron settlement where Janet lives. But the community is also home to tragedy. Janet's daughter was killed and her son wounded by a Palestinian suicide bombing in this pizza restaurant. Rachel was killed along with two other teenagers. Her brother Leo survived but lost both his sister and his best friend in the attack. So if they really think that giving back the territories is going to bring peace now, I think they ought to think again. Okay. It's not going to change anything. The Arabs still have it in their minds that we should be pushed into the sea. It's not going to change anything. Clashes between Jewish settlers and Palestinians are not unusual in the West Bank. The Jewish settlers, armed with guns, blocked the Palestinians from using the road because it passed through their settlement. The Palestinians insisted they be allowed in so they could cultivate their land. In this scene, Israeli security forces intervened as the two sides scuffled over the use of a road near Hebron. Israeli human rights activists say the West Bank settlements, home to about 380,000 Jews, infringe on Palestinians' human rights by restricting their movement and taking their property. A tribute to her lost daughter. Memories of Rachel line Janet's bedroom, which is also her office. Apart from her own personal loss, Janet feels for the youth of the settlement after the bombing. How, how can they survive another burial, another death, a close friend? How can it be possible? Three children killed just like that. 
Leor suffers from attention deficit disorder and attends a special school in Kedumin. Despite the small number of pupils in the class, both Leor and his friend Itzik have survived suicide bombing attacks. While Leor tries to put on a brave face, his mother knows he is still traumatized. He has a lot of anger. Uh, he's very angry inside and it can take not very much to spark that anger off because he doesn't know how to deal with that anger. Um, you know, I, I don't think he's going to say, I'm angry because of what happened. But, you know, inside him, there's a lot of anger. This animal habitat on the school grounds was donated in memory of three students killed in a separate attack. Many are concerned about the immediate and long-term effects of the ongoing violence on Israeli and Palestinian children. But for now, Janet is still learning how to deal with the pain. Every so often, I open up a little door that's locked away inside my head that uh, all my pain is kept in. And when it opens up, it comes gushing out. And I'm sure Leo must have a little case like that in his head as well. Back in the settlement, life continues as normal. Two years ago, Kenei Shamron had a population of 5,300 people. Today, there are 6,380 inhabitants. We grew, thank God, by over 1,000 people, which shows a healthy growth, even in very difficult times. Despite losing her only daughter, Janet has no desire to leave the settlement. For some Jews living in the West Bank, their defiance is a fight for what they believe is their right to the land. Here, where violence has become a way of life, Janet feels that her family is one of the more fortunate ones. This sounds crazy. I feel in the sense that I'm lucky because people are losing not one child, people are losing two, three, four children, people are losing parents. Whole families are getting totally, totally torn apart from the situation, you know. Our family was one of a luckier family. We only lost one child. And that just goes to show the, the situation that we're living in, that I can actually say that I'm lucky that I only lost one child. Israeli and Palestinian children have been losing parents and parents their children in a deadly cycle of Israeli military strikes. Palestinian suicide bombings, which sparked further retaliation from both sides. In this West Bank attack last month, an Israeli missile strike killed three Palestinian men. Witnesses said a 10-year-old boy and a 6-year-old girl were also killed. At the Jewish settlement in the West Bank, life goes on. Bomb damage has been repaired and pizza is back on the menu, but a long-term end to the violence is nowhere in sight. Under present circumstances, a peace agreement is likely to elude future West Bank generations on both sides of the conflict.